Oh, look at that, it's working. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing? What have we done in total here, like with this whole arrangement and new stuff? So we've added added steering wheel controls for the stereo and also paddle shifters. And this other bit here, what's this bit here? Ah, this do? And the cruise control. Cruise control, yeah. That is, uh, that will, is working off a, just a, one of those at the moment, wired, but we are gonna try and get it to work with the uh, steering wheel, but that will probably come at a later date. <laughs> Sorry, it's going a little bit in depth there. Yeah, really in depth, no. <laughs> That's why Chris works in the workshop out the back. <laughs> no, he's actually a salesman, so. So yeah, this is the PBS steering wheel we've been messing around with. Uh, it is basically like a 200 series Land Cruiser steering wheel, so pretty cool in a 80 series Land Cruiser, 27 years old. So having full stereo controls, cruise control, and paddle shift in a 27 year old Land Cruiser, kind of cool, bit different. Quick update, Super Dark Toe Pro. We've got one of these in my other car and they're an amazing bit of gear, really cool. Right, uh, that's not in the packet anymore, but um, from Burson I grabbed this uh, Nava load resistor and that is actually because it runs LED brake lights. On them you don't get uh, full resistance like you do a bulb, which can mess with the cruise control. So we put that load resistor in, that sorts it all out. It's about time I did an update on Frank the Tank and there's been a lot of stuff happening in here and I haven't really driven it much because of the fact that there's been stuff pulled apart everywhere. There's no center console and there's no cup holders. You can't drive a car without cup holders. This is the final bit where I've mentioned in a couple of videos already what I've been doing with the steering wheel so it's no secret that I've got paddle shift on it now. The main thing is, is that the steering wheel's in and it's working and the whole hold up recently was the fact that um, this little sucker here, which you can kind of just see, I'll see if we can get the camera to focus on, I'll put a picture of a product up, but um, that's a little brass horncock tack that uh, goes on the back of the steering wheel, which basically allows the uh, wheel to connect to the car. That's a factory one, it was kind of worn, it was squealing, it wasn't connecting with the wheel properly, so connectivity with the wheel was a bit sporadic. So I've replaced that, put a brand new one in it, you can still get them from Toyota, and the wheel is on now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, uh, show you with this on my head I'll just turn him on and uh, I'm gonna look like I'm going gold mining or something like this here basically this is the PBS wheel here so the long story short is the PBS are a company in Sydney you've probably seen Jamie's 79 series Land Cruiser absolutely massive weapon 100% engineered it's got portal hubs in it the whole deal but PBS are a company that do all sorts of good stuff like that and one of their main products of these steering wheels you see in a lot of 79s and 200s and they also do an 80 series adapter as well so um, we have that here it goes on nicely onto the hub here all lines up with the pin so that the uh, everything corrects when you and the horn contacts all nice and uh, in the right place and that sort of thing so when I first spoke to Jamie it was pretty much just to put cruise control on the car and um, the wheel here, we've got the Toyota stock on there yet. We've got one more module to come until we can actually get that to wirelessly work, but it does have two wireless modules in here that work here with both the stereo integration. So the stereo is all working now. I'll move my phone out of the way. And for the meantime, um, Dave and the guys from Command Group who do the Command Cruise Control, they've set up a cruise control in this car, which basically, because this car thinks it's a Commodore because of the loom in it, it's got the fly-by-wire pedal and their system, you unplug the pedal, it intercepts that. And then in the speedo, it's got a vehicle speed output. So I had the speedo out a little while ago because I wanted to put this Mark's four-wheel drive uh, gear indicator in here. It's a very nice thing. It plugs in the OBD port. That now tells me what gear I'm in like a new car, which is totally cool, especially with the fact that we've got paddle shift. And um, also I've got stereo integration here and also some spare buttons if you want to do something else like um, build something with a bit more power in it up the front and put some boost on it so that I'm not the second most powerful Land Cruiser panel van in the country, Sam Isles. <laughs> no, Sam's a good guy and he's building a Land Cruiser panel van as well. He came and stayed with me. He's a good dude. So um, it's good to see his car on the road and it sounds pretty mint. So I'm looking forward to finally seeing it um, and having a bit of a panel van fest together. So um, 
yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. He's even got a PVS wheel in his car too, so it goes to show how good a product they are. So anyway, getting back to this, the beautiful thing was is when I spoke to Jamie, we were talking about what we can do, and then speaking to Dave from Command Group, it was like, he uh, said, look, even though I'm a qualified mechanic, they want um, their cruise controls to be all installed by qualified installers. Chris, he's a qualified installer. He's been doing this stuff for a million years. Very, very smart guy. He makes this stuff look simple and he talks himself down, but he's a very, very clever guy. So Chris came along. He helped me wire up not just the cruise control. We got the stereo integration working. And then between those guys, we were working out because PVF hadn't to this point done anything for LS because they're mostly dealing with Land Cruiser and stuff like that. So we got in touch with another guy, Jeremy from JLED Customs, who's done a integrated Tiptronic to paddle shift setup, which we got to work with PVS. Those guys got talking, it was really good. They know what they're talking about. So he said, do this to this and that works. And so we got it all in the car and now we have paddle shift working, which is very cool. The one thing, like I was saying, we don't have the cruise control stalk working yet. We've got one more wireless module to come, but we do have a hardwired one. So I do have cruise control working and it meant that we could actually go out for a road test and set up the cruise control. So that's there now, but when the wireless one comes, this will go and it'll just be all on the steering wheel, which is totally cool. Beautiful. Actually, big shout outs to Burson Auto Parts as well. This is a projector IntelliStart jumper pack. Super cool. It's like a kettle too. You just put it on this charging station. So this has been invaluable in this build. All right, let's turn on the ignition. All right, so right now we're in neutral. And as you can see, this here tells me what gear I'm in. Normally, if I was going Tiptronic, I'd flick this over and then you can go forwards and backwards. But now with this JLED setup, it's quite clever in the fact that I'm just here, it's in drive or D for drive, and I can go up and down. It's not running or moving at the moment, but the way these body control modules work, it'll let you go first, second, third, and then I think it selects the gear when you start moving, but that's pretty much as active as it is. It's so good. It's just as good as touching the gear stick. So what I'm going to do now is um, get out, go for a quick drive. Like there's still crap everywhere. The dash is all apart. So I'm going to pull some stuff out of the car, set up the GoPro, go for a spin and uh, show you how it all works. So I'm um, very excited. So yeah, for the meantime, I'm just going to sit this back in place. And we're all good. So I'm going to go for a spin make sure this is all working, show you how it works, and um, looking forward to getting all the dash and the cup holders back in. Cup holders are the most important part of the car, and uh, going on some road trips with my cruise control, my stereo, and then every now and then when I wanna change lanes and do an overtake in the uh, overtaking lane, I can knock it back a gear without having to go over here or put my foot down. But um, yeah, let's uh, clean up and go for a spin. All right, so uh, first and foremost, before I go doing any paddle shifting or driving or anything like that, I'm taking the car to wash it because it's filthy. It's been sitting around, the weather's been horrendous, the rain's been coming in sideways from everywhere. It's just, poor thing needs a birthday and a bath. So, sorry, welcome to Adelaide where people don't know how to merge and they just want to cut you off until you crash. But, um, yeah, anyway, I'm going to uh, give the car a quick wash, so uh, I'll be right back. It's squeaky clean now, thanks to uh, Paul's car wash there. Big thanks to the Norris brothers, a couple of legends. Anyway, I'm going to, uh, at the risk of looking like an idiot driving in traffic with a GoPro on my head, I'm going to do that just so that I can show you guys how this works. So uh, here we go. Yeah, look at that guy. Yeah. Mmm. I mean, we're all getting so used to driving around with masks on our heads now anyway, on our faces, so yeah. Give me one sec, I'll make sure the shot looks good and then we're good to go. Alrighty, shot looks pretty good. Put it in uh, D for drive, or as these are, one. And we're off. It's a bit busy because it's uh, Thursday afternoon and everyone's starting to go home from work, so. I uh, won't be able to do too much crazy stuff, but um, it's also a public street, so I'm not going to go driving like an idiot. But, um, yeah, here we go. Whoop. 
Adelaide. Merging is optional in Adelaide, but we don't really know how to do it here. And this person's driving the bicycle lane. So anyway, here we are cruising along in sixth gear to a red light. So I'll put it in manual first and then second, third, fourth. And then fifth. And then, uh, like I mentioned before, I haven't got the uh, cruise control stalk all wired up yet, but uh, the beauty is, is that I do have this one right here, so I can turn it on and set. And then all I have to do is hit the brakes to uh, stop the thing. Well, turn off the cruise control. But um, yeah, the good thing is everything's working now. I've got all the stereo controls going. So I can go up and down, that won't turn the music on just yet, but um, as we come down the hill I'll go into a 100 zone and I can um, start messing around with the gears a bit, so I'll get out of cruise control, hit the brakes, and then so we'll just back him off a little bit. Sixth gear, just rolling along, doing, we'll get it back to about 90. So, going down a hill though, so it doesn't really help, but um, you can change back down through the gears to keep the thing from going over the speed limit if I want. Back up a gear, through to sixth. And like I mentioned before, there's like a, a, a time window that means I don't have to put it into manual mode over here. I can just cruise along like this. So coming up a hill now, I'm in manual. It'll want to automatically go back when I reverse to auto mode, but I can override it and go back two clicks there. I can even third gear. Now you'll notice as well that uh, if you can hear the engine, which I'm pretty sure you can, there's a little bit of time delay with some of the gear shifts and that's not anything to do with the uh, paddle shift itself. Like you have to be quite assertive with your paddle shifting here, which I guess is a smart thing anyway because you don't want them to be a little bit touchy so that they shift on their own. But um, the one thing is is that um, we still need to get in and do a bit of driving and programming with the auto to get it to work. And it's all uh, torque management and that sort of thing, but um, that's something we can get to a bit later on. But for now, it'll go back to auto mode at the moment just because it's sitting. But I can go manual first by just snapping it into manual first there, then. And uh, yeah, as easy as that. We're quite digging this, this is Something uh, very different for a 27 year old Land Cruiser. So anyway, I'm going to go for a little bit of a spin, put a couple more uh, Ks on it. I like the fact that, um, I like the fact that I can turn corners as well and still have access to the gears rather than being over here doing this sort of stuff. Two hands on the wheel. It's very cool. Not um, the most exciting video, but um, definitely something really cool as far as an upgrade on a super old Land Cruiser. But um, yeah, I uh, can't thank enough Jamie from PBS, Chris for all the installations, uh, Dave from Command Auto Group, and Jeremy from JLED Customs for making this work. Jamie from PBS, super cool product. So working that in with all the other products there has been amazing. and. Um, Really looking forward to doing some road trips in this, using my cruise control, my paddle shift, and uh, also getting my bloody cup holders back in. So uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you very soon with some more Frank the Tank stuff, some other cool stuff in the pipeline. 
But um, yeah, lastly, also a big thumbs up to Sam Miles. It's pretty cool to see you get the car running and, and driving, mate. I think a lot of people out there do understand how much work goes into building a car, some don't. Um, but uh, you know, it is a massive undertaking doing that much work to a car, especially with him doing an engine rebuild. I was kind of cheating. I've got a brand new engine pretty much for this. So yeah, uh, good job, mate. And uh, I'm looking forward to catching up and seeing your rig now that you've seen mine. So um, hopefully at that point, they might be almost as fast as each other. Watch this space.